What's really interesting about the movie is, is how it does tell the story. Of course, we all have the image of Dracula in our head. A lot of people will think of Bela Lugosi, blah, hello, I'm Dracula, you know, something like that. But what here Coppola does, and, and the true challenge of this movie, is that he does make it a, a legitimate love story, you know, that spans uh, centuries, lifetimes. and. It, it, it's sincere about it, which I really liked. And Gary Oldman, uh, as Dracula, uh, does an incredible job. One of the best performances of his career, I think, because he does sell that. He sells the love story aspect, because that's what's really all about. I mean, there's horror elements to it. Yes, he turns into this disgusting monster, uh, or this decrepit, decrepit old man who's creepy and has weird hair, but underneath it all, what, what is really, really interesting about the whole drive of the movie is just how desperate this character is. He's not a, a nefarious, loving evil, just for evil's sake kind of character. No, it's something more complex than that, and I, I guess something that maybe audiences don't necessarily want to see. I mean, we want to know that the bad guy's the bad guy, but he's really kind of the anti-hero here. Um, as a complete red herring, that uh, they throw Keanu Reeves as kind of the main character. So we kind of think, you know, our, our expectations as audiences are set up in that, okay, Keanu Reeves, he's the good guy. He's going to marry Winona Ryder. They have to stop Dracula because he's bad. No, it doesn't quite work that way. And setting up the expectations and then going against them uh, with the love story between uh, Gary Oldman and Winona Ryder, uh, it becomes this you know beautiful and tragic kind of love story that is set amongst this backdrop of just visually marvelous uh, universe that Coppola creates through Bram Stoker's text. I think this stands as one of its best representations and one of the character's best representations.